About early in the summer, his relationship with her was relatively stable. The so-called stability means that there is a rhythm that will never change. They meet once a week and make love twice at a time. She usually comes over. His performance was perfect every time, and on two occasions, she even gave him 100 points. Both of them like to rate each other after it, which is also an important part of the post-play. There is no foreplay, and there is no need. It takes dozens of minutes from the end of the call to the time when she rushes over. These dozens of minutes can't wait. It can be said to be ragging. Their foreplay is their waiting and imagination. Waiting and imagination are ragging. There is no foreplay, and the postplay is particularly important on the other hand. Otherwise, what to do? Unless to do it again. Physically speaking, there is no problem on both sides, but every time she controls it, next time you still have a night shift at night. There is nothing else in their postplay, which is to score each other. Add them up and divide them by two. They engraved the result of the division by two on the wall. The wall was covered with Arabic numbers. No one knew what kind of a mess it was. After a few days of scoring, they stopped it. Men always suffer from the problem of scoring, but men have their hard standards. In fact, because of this, she insisted on scoring. She said that in the digital age, feelings don't count, and everything depends on numbers to speak for themselves. The cruelty of numbers finally manifested in that afternoon. Quite cruel. He had made an appointment with her and met at Gulu Square at one o'clock in the afternoon and said that he had good news to tell her. Unexpectedly, he fainted as soon as they met, so he didn't say a word, no matter how she asked. Then he returned to home. He still didn't say what he did. Then do it. He failed the first time. She had to be patient and wait for him. He failed even faster the second time. She laughed so hard and said to him, Zero plus zero divided by two is still zero. She deliberately found a compass from his drawer and must paint this nothing circle for him completely on the wall. She didn't notice how gloomy his face was at this moment. He snatched the compass from her hand and threw it out of the window with a shoop. His face was blue and the atmosphere suddenly went wrong. Because his movement was so fierce, her hand was broken by the compass. The blood wound was not deep, but it was three centimeters long, which was scary. For such a long time, apart from sex, they actually get along like brother and sister, and she has regarded him as her brother in private. He turned his face like this and didn't recognize anymore. How could her face be saved? She was clenching the wound, the blood had come out, and the pain was terrible. Of course, it was her who need to be coaxed at this time. But she knew it, it must be her joke that hurt his man's self-esteem, which in turn coaxed him. Unexpectedly, he didn't even appreciate and pushed her away with a slap. And the blood splashed on the wall. This push really broke her heart. You are the brother, and the younger sister yielded to you and coaxed you like this. What do you want to do? She didn't care about the wound anymore, just picked up the clothes and put them on. She is leaving and never wants to see you again. It's all zero, and you still lose your temper. Her walking finally calmed him down, and he hugged her from behind. He took her hand, looked at her blood, and burst into tears. He held her hand in his palm and licked it over and over again with his tongue. 
His expression was extremely depressed. It seemed to be bleeding. Her heart softened, and on the other hand, she still felt sorry for him and called him brother. He ended up using his crappy tie to help her wrap the wound, and then put her hand on his face. He said in her palm, "Am I really useless? Am I born with a zero score?" Just kidding! How can you take this seriously? It's not the first time for us. I'm a useless thing," he said firmly. "I'm born with a zero score." "You are good," she said. "You know, I like you in bed." He laughed, but tears burst into his eyes. "Of course, I know. I am only capable with this," he said. "I don't have any confidence at all. I can't hold it any more." She understands. She actually understood it a long time ago, but it was hard to ask. He went out for an interview early in the morning. The test was test, but the face was not saved. You, you are inferior to me," she coaxed him. "How many times have I interviewed? Look, the more wiping my face, the brighter it is." It's not an interview or not an interview. He became emotional. How can she look at me like that? That female boss. How can she look at me like that? It's like I'm a pile of shit, a pee, a fart. She hugged him. She got it. She knew it. In order to stay in Nanjing, she has met countless eyes since her junior year. For people like them, what is the most terrifying thing in the world? What is the most ruthless? Eyes. Some people's eyes can peel skin, and some people's eyes can ejaculate. Eyes that can ejaculate are really terrible. If you are not careful, they will spring on you all over your body and face, and you won't be able to change in time. Whoever isn't involved cannot understand the virus tastes. In his eyes, she pulled him on the bed and lay on his back to comfort him. She stroked his chest and kissed his hair. She pushed his head over and smiled suddenly with a particularly evil smile. She stared into his eyes and said, "Very pretty, I am the boss. You are just a pile of shit. What can you do with me, huh? What can you do with me?" His full of sadness and despair burst at this moment. When the embankment burst, it became domineering sex. He pushed her back on the bed. She screamed, and the unparalleled pleasure spread through every hair. She yelled desperately. She finally knew that he was so great. Relaxed. She lay on the bed, leaning forward. She stroked her abdomen with her hand, sighed, and said, "I don't have any pressure now. It's so easy. How about you?" "Yes," he gasped, looking at the floor above his head. "I am much easier too." "Trust me, brother," she said. "As long as we can relax, the days will be past. We can carry through, no matter how."